Men, do you ever feel like you just can't get ahead? Like you're misunderstood? Like you have no one to talk to that truly hears you? And women, are you often frustrated, hurt, and saddened in your relationships with the men in your life? What if there were a community of like-minded men going through the same challenges that would support, hear, and understand what you're going through? Working together in unison to create understanding, intimacy, and strong connections. That's the Way of the Illuminated Warrior. Way of the Illuminated Warrior talk show is a forum of candid conversations for men and women about men. Being a man today is not always easy. Until now. All right. Thanks for joining us on another episode of the Way the Illuminated Warrior talk show. Um, for those of you who have not joined the show before, I just want to reiterate the intention of this show. Um, the way it began um, is it's supposed to be candid conversations for men and women about men, which we still do and we still focus on. And as the world is developing and changing, so is the show evolving with content that I believe is beneficial for everybody, not just men and women, but also all gender expressions and sexual identification. So um, and we're always open to reaching out to myself or anybody that's on the show. If you have questions, comments, or want to hear other content, uh, we always appreciate that. So um, it's really about listening and developing clear communications, relating to one another in healthy ways, and being of service whenever we can, whenever possible. So with that, I am very excited today to introduce my friend Maria Aleandra to the conversation. Hola, mi amiga. Hola. Como yeah. estas, Laska? I'm, I love how you say my name. Thank you for that. Well, <laughs> that we're going to talk beautiful. about that because we we first met, I think it was back in 2019 mm -hmm. with a group of other wonderful people that I know were both pretty much st stayed in contact with a lot of them. Um, mm -hmm. We were doing a leadership program out in San Diego and we did some pretty wild stuff, which mm -hmm. it's like kind of like Fight Club in Vegas. We're not going to talk about here. <laughs> I know, yes. <laughs> but uh, but I, I really feel that it bonded. Like, I just remember... Well, one night on the beach, you know, you, I mean, mm -hmm. there was a lot of bonding, really great things between all, all of us, right? So yeah. we, that's where, where our friendship developed. And um, so I'm really happy we could connect in this way because you and I haven't spoken in a while, um, but I watch your, your podcast with you and with, with your husband and, and all the great work you're doing. So to have you on the show and to be able to connect in this way and hear firsthand um, is not just touching mm -hmm. to my heart, but I think the audience is really going to benefit a lot from hearing what uh, Maria Alejandra, a.k.a. M.A., <laughs> has to share. So, um, yeah, so mm. um, this wonderful woman does all sorts of spiritual work, um, coaching, astrology, healing work, um, a lot of offerings for her clients, um, connecting and enhancing their lives. So um, her information will be in the show notes, and we will share that at the end of the conversation. So be sure to reach out to her. Um, and speaking of astrology, um, one of the reasons that I wanted to have you on the show now um, is because we're coming up to the vernal equinox, which is the first day of summer. And that's big energy, as we know. And uh, and you have an offering, a radiant offering, which we're going <laughs> to talk about, not just yet, but people stick around because this is big. This is really good. This is, this is something that you're not going to want to miss. And um, so what I really want to touch upon is um, is the podcast that you and Jules, your husband, have. We're I want to start there. Um, there's yeah. so much good content here, but I really, it really touches my heart, which we were speaking a little bit very briefly about before we started. Um, it's just um, for those of you who haven't seen it, um, it's it's called the couple shift. So it's it's Maria Aleandra and her husband um, Jules, who has been living with uh, a, a rare neurodegenerative disease, which we know as ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. So, mm -hmm. um, and this is, I, I believe, what twenty twenty. He he got. Yes. Yeah. He was diagnosed he in twenty twenty May of twenty twenty. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what a shock, right? Yes, it was a life changing uh, event, uh, along with other life changing events at the time, because it was the timing was really crazy. It was the week. It was March 2020, the week where everything was going into lockdown pretty much mm -hmm. in the States. Um, that was the first time that we met with a neurologist that said this could be ALS. And so he didn't get the official diagnosis until May. But I always count March as sort of the point where everything shifted for us. So um, thank you for pointing out the podcast. It's something that we both feel so incredibly proud of. And it started in 2019 
We called it the couple shift because after I had been working corporate for many, many years, um, I was laid off of my job and I transitioned into wanting to work on my own and do the coaching thing, which was very outside of the realm of what we thought we would do in our lives. Mm -hmm. And it was like the moment of a big shift that I wanted to take advantage of and take that leap of faith. And he was a teacher at the time. And he was having a really hard time where just, just just there was a lack of harmony where he was and just a bunch of things. And I said, what if we were to explore a different way of living and go outside of the norm of the regular traditional ways that we were really both raised that you follow sort of the, you know, the uh, path, right? Oh yeah. But yeah. I, as my soul is like, wants to buck the system in every direction. And so, yeah, um, yeah. And so I had a bunch of years of living a more like structured life where it was like, all right. And I, I love every minute of that because I, it was meant to be that way and it was perfect. And, and then it was like, there was a big, important moment where I got to like, okay, decide something different. And first I took that leap. And then I invited him to consider taking that leap more intentionally with me, not just supporting me, but like all in. And so when that's when we started the podcast, we right. called it the couple shift because we were shifting our lives and you know what it means to now be entrepreneurs together and all that jazz. And so then when we got the the diagnosis and then it was like, oh, that was the really big shift for us because um, ALS, uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, Lou Gehrig's disease, as it's known more commonly, like you said, is a disease with no known cure yet. Um, it's a disease that is incredibly um, devastating and it basically takes away all of your your ability to, do, to use your muscles and it's like your body just begins to shut down section by section. For him, it started in his upper extremities and his arms, and then it moved to his legs. So he's pretty much in a wheelchair right now, 24-7, um, um, bad wheelchair. You know, that's his life. And eventually it takes away your ability to be able to speak, your ability to eat, your ability to breathe until you lose your life. And it's... You know, it, it's something that we have had to obviously uh, navigate through together with lots and lots of ups and downs. Um, and I'm so proud of how we've done it. And, you know, it's an ever evolving, ever changing, really, really hard situation. Oh, yeah. Um, but, you know, what's beautiful and I love, you know, like the the name of this, you know, the work that you do and this idea of the illuminated warrior, you know, I see, I see my husband, I've always said he's an ALS warrior. Mm. And, you know, he's never set out to like, you know, change the world. He's not that kind of person. He's very humble, <laughs> and very like, gr like grounded and very sort of centered and like, yeah <laughs> the value that he sees it like i'm the one i'm the visionary i'm the one that like, i want to go out and change the world <laughs> and he's like all right honey i'll support you in that <laughs> so he but i you know and, and and he was you know chosen to to and i believe on a soul level we we choose the path we walk and i believe that him and i made a contract to do this thing together as did our son skylar who's six years old and so the three of us made a pact in this lifetime to do this thing and walk this path of the illuminated warrior together in our own way. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's something that is also evolved in the phases of it and how we've been able to uh, accept and move through certain things and hold a balance of both acceptance and, and hope and what is still possible and not, not giving, giving up, you know, the the light and the opportunities that still exist yeah. so yeah yeah and that ability to communicate all of that is priceless because oh, yeah. um it's such a hard path so sure. yeah yeah now that's the gold i mean they, yeah. they say this is saying man plans and god laughs or goddess plans and yeah. you know woman plants and yeah. goddess laughs but um so what i what i really love about the show i was listening to um the valentine's day show mm -hmm. and and what's so great about it is you guys are so authentic and real 
that you, you're you're living with a, a extremely challenging, um, debilitating disease, you know, and it's a and I, I will I'll call it, which I think you'll agree, it's a family disease. It affects you, mm-hmm. it affects Skylar, it affects the, the whole family. Hundred um, percent. Yeah. But what I love is, and I, and it's great that you're not just hiding and 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 dealing with it on your own. You're putting it out there. You're letting people know about it. You're you're, you're educating people and you're sharing, you know, this, these trials and tribulations. But the, the Valentine's Day show was great because it's like, <laughs> you know, I'm still your wife. I'm a woman, you know, and and yeah, it was great that he, you know, he 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 rose to the occasion and he, and he got you know, the the the, ex, the express package at the spa. Um, but it's like, you know, I'm just listening to him. It's like this is BS, man. Like this is a BS holiday. It's like, and you know, as a man, I get what he's saying. You know, I totally get it. But you're like, but I'm still a woman, and and then you know, and he tries to like. Get in there, like, well, you know, an ALS, and you're like, it's not an ALS thing. It's a, it's a it's a couples thing. It's a real life thing, and and I just love that because it's very real, you know. So you're like yeah. navigating like both worlds and just figuring it out how it works, and um and you know, but I hear a lot of love in there, which which yes. I yes. Really- I, I, I'm so glad you brought it up. I loved that show. Him and I both loved it so much because we're very, we've gotten more and more authentic as we go, especially in the podcast. And it's such a great like avenue of expression for both of us. And the more comfortable we get, the more fun it is. And so when we finish that episode, we like, you know, hit the stop button. We looked at each other like, that was awesome. And we were just (laughs) laughing because it's like living with anything like, ALS, which is the intensity is just like dialed up, like the dial is not even registering because it's so intense. But then you have all these moments that are like couple moments or parent moments or moments where you're just interacting. And it's like, this is just life happening. And it's we've moved through so many stages of like, you know, for me personally, like, how, how can I be upset at my husband when this is happening, for example? Yeah. And, but moving through that, it, it's, it's, it feels very healing to me to, to go beyond the, well, I'm not, I'm not going to see him as a victim. I'm not going to, it's like, That's I'm not going to let him use the ALS card because That's then great. I'm not That's seeing great. him and his yeah. power. And so, yes. you know, it, and, and same the other way, because he, you know, I could use the caregiver card, the caregiver right. wife card on him. And, you know, one of the things that has really helped us to weather this is the, is our, our intention to really communicate with each other at a different level, which mm-hmm. thankfully was something that, again, the universe is so divine in in how it sets things up and then you look back and you're like oh um even the conversations we were having right before this happened and the 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 stretches we were making as a couple and even deciding to you know shift our way of living were kind of preparing us for what was to come because we were already having we were already dialing up our communication in ways mm-hmm. that you know were really vulnerable with each other and that has really helped because the level of trust that we have right now is profound Mm -hmm. and the intimacy that happens when you're, you know, caring for somebody, we literally have like melded, like I'm his hands and now his legs. And, you know, um, it's, it's, it's incredible, but he's still my husband. I'm still his wife. The guy messed it up on Valentine's Day. And <laughs> the thing is, this is like, he says, like, oh, no, man. Can, what am I going to do? Like, how am I? And I was like, listen, <laughs> you could have done so many things. <laughs> and it was awesome. It was awesome. And for me, it was so liberating to sit in that moment that day and be like, I mean, we've been married for now 10 years, right? And I'm like, this is just, this is him. This is yeah. him, not, you know, it's, it, there's a there's it's like preserving the person because yeah. beyond everything that his body's going through he's the still the same the same man and um well i just yeah. want to interject here because you know you, I, I love that you, you you're so matter of fact about it which uh, and i'm sure there's been extreme challenges with this but like you say oh well, the universe well not everybody sees it that way you know and, yeah. and there is a lot of pity party for a lot of people i'm sure um and so hearing you both of you the way you you've 
rose to accept what is and you're you're I don't, I don't know if I'd say you're welcoming the challenges but you're but you're obviously meeting them head on um you have a six-year-old son and you're you're setting a really great example for how to live it, it sounds like you're really not letting this stop you from finding the joy mm. and finding the the intimacy yeah. in your relationship and uh and that's so important so um so I want to yeah. know from from Skylar from you and from Jules, like, because it has to have affected, of course, you know, your lives, you know, and, and how do you pivot with that? So I'll ask first with the little dude, like, how how has he, you know, perceived, well, you wouldn't necessarily know how he perceived it, but how is he handling this? And how, yeah. how you know, what, what changes are, are you seeing? And how is he being supported? And mm -hmm. what is he saying about it? Yeah, I love the word pivot, because it is like, it, it requires a the choice to shift your perspective, right? All the time. Um, before I get to Skylar, what you were saying, I've thought a lot about, you know, the pity party versus like, okay, seeing it. And, and it's like, I, I, what I, what it always rings true for me is that I could lose so much energy on a pity party. And trust me, I have moments when I'm crying my eyes out and it's, it's, Anybody would. it's all there. And I am sad all the time, like all the time I am grappling with losing my husband, because this is something that every day sh shows up in everything in every way. So I am all the time there's, there's sadness in my system. But I think because I've chosen to like, how do we expand our world rather than contract it? There is room for the sadness. And then there's room for a whole lot of like happiness and optimism and joy to also inhabit that soup it's not like one or the other um because we would be losing a lot of really precious energy in the pity party and so it's like well me p pitying and like it's not gonna make als go away um and so it's like well there's a choice always like how do you know how do we keep our lives happy and i and and lessen any regrets of you know, missing, missing out on precious time. And so I've learned also to find ways to recalibrate myself and help mm -hmm. him recalibrate and Skylar so that we can like move through the really tough, tough moments that are like intensify. Um, and as far as Skylar goes, so he's, he's six and a half and he is a super wise little guy. As I really think a lot of like the young kids nowadays, yeah. um, especially those that are being born to those of us that are here, like pioneering new ways of thinking and living and bringing in new like forms of light. There's like this beautiful group of people that were like shifting, right. The tide. Um, and then these kids that are coming are I, the way that I describe my son and a lot of other kids that I've experienced at his age, but especially Skylar is that he came equipped with a whole new toolkit, just like, in the box, like open the box. And there it is of a sense of knowing himself and a sense of confidence in the world that I, I think those at least of my generation did not have, like, even then it's like, hopefully it's getting better and better, right? Like it's every generation yes. has a, another layer in the, in the cake, but Skylar, you know, from the beginning, Jules and I have always uh, chosen to be very open with him obviously within the scope of what he can understand, you know, he was three years old when his dad started to change. And so uh, Jules lost the ability to use his hands pretty quickly in his arms. So, you know, the, the, the devastating effects of not being able to be a dad the way you want to be with your son were, have been, you know, totally crushing for him and for Skylar to be on the other side of, you know, how does play look like now? How mm -hmm. does being with my dad look like um, as he's gotten more aware of like, oh, how other and he's. Um, and when I say, you know, earlier, I was like, our souls choose these like these yeah. challenges, at least for me, that belief gives me a lot of strength and peace um, because it makes me realize that even in the darkest night, I am equipped to weather this and I've, I've always felt the same about mm -hmm. Skylar and I remember 
the day, the first day when we were driving back from that neurologist office and, um, you know, Jules had tears in his eyes and looks at me and he goes, what about Skylar? And I said, all I know is Skylar came ready for this. And so we get to trust that in his way, he will be ready. And so, you know, we've done proactive things, Jules and I, like we've got, we've got some like counseling as parents early on to sort Mm -hmm. of talk things through with somebody who was wonderful. And she helped us, you know, uh, have some ease around ways to convey. So, you know, I, I took that approach, which was helpful. Uh, Jules and I talk a lot and anytime, you know, Skylar asks questions, we talk very openly, but Skylar is very matter of fact about a lot of things. And so sometimes it's more about the questions that he asks me that are very kind of matter of fact and clear me meeting him in that space and not, um, what am I looking like not patronizing him, but like meeting him there and having him be energetically a part of what's happening. Because I think as parents, we tend to have the reaction that we want to shield our kids and our kids want to be a part of it. Like they want to be a part of it, not just the conversation, but the energetics of it. And I think the most detrimental thing we could do, I could do as a mother is to like shut him in, like, you know, shut him out. So I, I, I choose to like remain, keep that avenue completely open and, um, you know, and, and honor the different like layers of what this looks like for all of us, because there's, there's Julian's experience with this disease. There's my experience individually. There's our experience as a couple. And then there's Skylar's experience with us as a, you know, parents and kid then there's Skylar's experience with Jules and Skylar's experience right. with me. there's all these and I think like the honoring of each one of those spaces and then not making assumptions about how somebody else is dealing with something and again um honoring the power that everybody has yeah um to you know it's like that thing where you not having those expectations on people or trying to control it or just letting it, letting things play out. Um, There's a lot more of that, like wisdom that can come through when you just kind of let it breathe, you know? Well, I think that takes consciousness to do that. You know, I mean, being in that soup that you're in, I'm sure it's not always easy. Oh oh, yeah. Oh yeah. No, this is like the soup is a good, it's, it's yes. And I am in it all the time. There's no like, break from it there's no yeah. you know it's it's all the time it, um yeah. and it's um i mean it there's so many there's there's so many layers of different things going on all the time in my in my system sure. um and something else that i've been conscious to that i want to share is you know the the aspects of um the 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 trauma that can become deep like embedded in in a person's body mind spirit as you go through this from early on i wanted to be conscious of being sort of open and porous enough to not let that get trapped in mm-hmm. um and I know you, 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 you let it all out, which is beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Like just from what I know of you, which I appreciate that. I mean, yeah. because of that, it, it causes illness and then relationship issues. So it's yes. wonderful I, that you do that. It yes. Really because it's like that idea of, well, you know, sort of um, in, while you're still very present, sort of envisioning, you know, not letting that get caught in your system for anybody that's going through something very challenging. Right? And I mean, all of us right now, collectively worldwide, <laughs> as a big human yeah. family, mm-hmm. we've been going through the friggin' ringer. And yeah. thankfully, we're right now at a time where there's a b- big opportunity for a shift in energy that I'm, I hope people can really, like, take a bite out of that juicy fruit that's being offered to us right now well as you said before the word choice it's it's all a choice so you you could present it you could offer it and then those who are awake and aware and open to it will accept and others 
Like my my yeah. one of my mentors, Ocean of Fast Wolf, she used to say, Wasco, why why are you trying so hard with these guys? You're beating your head against a rock and they're not yeah. listening, they're not open to it, they're asleep. You know, give them a pillow, let them stay asleep. If they yeah. wake up, you'll be there for them. If not, don't don't you know waste your energy, you know, don't don't you know get get drained from that because you know, yes. so it's, it's the same kind of thing, you know. Yes. You could offer it and then whoever accepts, you could be there to help them and be in service. If, yeah. Completely. So I want to completely. ask you, um, so you made the, made this um, statement before, um, you believe that this is a sole contract, um, you know, and obviously you have your your challenges with it. Um, so does Jules share that same belief? Um, because he's going through it physically, which um, mm-hmm. as a man, just just that's part of our manhood. You know, we're, we're doers. We're like, and to not have use of your body is got to be extremely, extremely, extremely challenging, mm-hmm. depressing, all those things that come along with that. So um, is he of the mindset that, okay, this was, you know, this was our contract. This is what creator or mm-hmm. whatever his belief is like, okay, we're going to rise yeah. through the ashes of this. I mean, is he, does he look at it that way? Um, you know, not to, not to speak for him, but I think he, he has his own spiritual way of understanding what's happening and that has evolved as well as he's been open himself more and more to see things from different perspectives um it's been beautiful though to see Jules open into allowing more of his sort of inner authentic spiritual divine masculine um uh you know really come out to play and not get caught in the sort of the ego or the pride of you know get, that could could have been really constricting because then it's like it doesn't allow things to move um you know we've done especially last throughout all of last year and we've documented all this in the podcast we did all this plant medicine together and you know, we've, we've done last year was like a year of just doing ceremony after ceremony that was all just like divinely guided, not planned. It just all kind of blossomed. And it was really beautiful to go through it together. And I always acknowledged Jules for his willingness to see this with such honesty and reality as well. My husband's a science major. He studied biology. He was a bio, he was a science teacher. Mm-hmm. Um, he's very pragmatic and practical. Um, uh, he has his own way, but he has a very like spiritual connection with nature. For example, he always has and animals. And I think that I'm really proud that he's taken a sort of, um, very open, expansive route of seeing what's happening. And he was the ultimate like acts of service kind of person, like love language, acts of service all the way. Like that was the absolute doer, um, very active, you know, uh, in every way. And um, so this was even more of a shock to the system because it's also made this idea and we talk a lot about like purpose right like finding the purpose when like what is the purpose and so um you know he has moments when he's just like what the f like screw it all and then he has he moments say F. he says the whole word I've yeah 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 oh completely <laughs> completely <laughs> yes completely i love that um <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And he's very like, you know, but, and what I've also really think has been very awesome about Jules and yesterday we were even uh, at the ALS clinic where we talked to all these different doctors and specialists and different modalities of what he's going through the um, aspects of it. And I was saying to one of them, like, you know, one of the best things about Jules is that he's been so vocal from the beginning Um with me, like very open with me, he's, he's communicated everything. Um, and also he's very open of anybody who wants to know about what's happening with him. Um, and even, you know, things like in the podcast, uh, 
it's been, I think that's been so healing for him. And because I know my astrology, <laughs> I could tell you that in his chart, it's like, Yes, like the ability to communicate from the heart for him is one of his soul missions. Like, you know, our, our soul, our souls come in wanting to have these really, like, there's some really beautiful places in our chart where we can see our purpose. Mm -hmm. And after having really uh, read his chart and understood, I was like, wow, his, him communicating is a core soul purpose of his like learning how to communicate beyond established paradigms or feeling like maybe he wasn't heard in the past or shut down or how are you your true self when other people around you see you a certain way and try to fit you in a box um and ALS has the particularity that it does affect your vocal cords it does affect your actual physical ability to speak and to interact with the world in every way. So for him having to find new ways to express is like, literally it's like his soul came in with like, okay, we're going to do it. And we're going to really do it. Like you're going to really, you know, just like jump through a bunch of hoops this lifetime. Um, so yeah. 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 Yeah, well, that's all beautiful. So for your for yourself, what's what would you say is your biggest challenge? My biggest challenge with ALS or well, with with this new paradigm. I'm going to call it a new paradigm. The new paradigm of ALS that you're living with. Yes. Um, in, interacting with with your husband, with your partner. Mm -hmm. Um, still being a mom, still being a business owner, still being an intuitive, all that stuff. Like, yeah, you know, it's, it's been a huge shift. Yeah. Obviously. Thank so. you for that question. I, I'd say the biggest challenge is um, uh, giving myself uh, enough space, my soul enough space, um, moving through guilt into uh, expansiveness and not not having uh, guilt is such like a low frequency thing. And it's so easy to have, you know, a perfect example is I had for the longest time this underlying feeling of guilt whenever I was doing something active, walking, running, whatever, being active with my son, because here's my husband who can no longer do that. And so it wasn't a choice like, oh, like, I'm not going to do it because he can't do it. It was just like a, it was this underlying feeling of guilt around it. And we think as humans that, the, oh, that's a like a healthy thing like oh we're but no that's actually no, is not very <laughs> detrimental it's and so many people are wired for it and we use it kind of as currency against each other in like you know subtle ways and i had a big breakthrough around that um around honoring continuing to honor my self my whole self and moving through that guilt and really understanding the importance of when I, when I, you know, my rise helps everybody else. And this, and it's so fascinating because a lot of the stuff that I was talking about as a coach before that felt like, oh, these are things that I want to convey. Now it's like, oh, I'm, li I'm living, I'm yeah. living like the ultimate gauntlet. This is the ultimate gauntlet. So there's not a lot anybody can tell me that I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Go on. Yeah. And so moving through like standing whole and, and allowing myself that space, you know, caregivers, we are on the job 24 seven and I'm his wife first and foremost. Right. But I've also chosen to take on the role as caregiver very intentionally. And so when we talk about like job in the world, that is my number one priority. Um, and finding, you know, support around me so that I can still carve out space for holding the the passions and the the purposeful work that I want to do. Um, and I took a lot of time off last year, fully, like, again, intentionally, uh, and I had to just my soul was like, there was no there wasn't a whole lot to give outside. And I had to really focus and tend to where we were. And now I'm feeling a shift of like, oh, okay. There's like a breath of my, I've expanded a little bit more 
So my biggest challenge has been to tending to, to me, um, and letting myself have that ample space. And I know this is something that many, many, many people, especially women and moms out there, I'm sure relate to hundred percent. Um, because also we're taught to dial ourselves down and we're taught to like, you know, give and serve and yeah. no matter how evolved we think we are, we still have so much, so much, so many of those distortions to heal of like, what is our place? And, you know, it's like living that and being aware of that and, um, preserving the sanctity of our marriage and our relationship and not letting this thing, this thing that has come like come between us because it's literally there. It's like a third party all the time. So like yeah. how, you know, it's just. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I want to give you kudos because seriously um, relationships are challenging enough without having something like ALS jumping into the party, you know, yeah. and I'm sure it is no party at all. So, you know, really that's why I see you as such a powerful woman because you're, you're not only you, you're running your business, you're raising a kid, you're you're being a supportive partner. Um, you have ALS on top of all of that because all those things. I mean, you know, I've been coaching for for many a couple of decades. I know I don't look that old with my gray hair, but um, I've heard so many stories. So I, I totally understand where you're coming from with that, and that's why I, I want to give you kudos because it's um, it's so challenging to have a healthy, beautiful relationship, raise a, a kid, allow them and foster autonomy, which it sounds like you're doing for Skylar, mm -hmm. be there for your husband and have a business and, ha and have it all. So yay you, you know, really, you. it's uh, it's really important. And um, yeah. so that's why the, the conversation is so important to me, just to hear how, you know, the dynamic between, you know, you and your partner and how that's working out. And it's, um, you know, it really is a beautiful thing. So- Thank you for being a powerful woman in this world, which is not easy to do. Mm -hmm. A lot of men are not real comfortable with that. And mm -hmm. too bad, guys, if you're not. Don't I this know is, it. This is the new way. Ser seriously, <laughs> like, you know, get, get with it or go, go, you're going to go the way of the dodo bird. Like, <laughs> exactly. Exactly, guys. You hear that? Get with it or you're going the way of the dodo bird. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. But it really is um, a beautiful thing because when 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 guys – um, can relate to a strong woman and not be threatened by them and realize that, hey, you know, we're we're able to do this, not this or not this, but we're able to actually, you know, be 100%. in communion with each other. It's such a beautiful thing, you know, so I really, uh, I really honor you and what you're doing. It's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. We'll be right back after this. Do you sometimes feel down, lost or lonely? Are your finances feeling sluggish? Can your relationships use a healthy tune-up? Don't fear, bro. Help is here. Experience the benefits of connecting with other men who are going through similar challenges. Be supported in our safe, sacred, and inspiring monthly telecircle with the Brotherhood of the Illuminated Warriors. Connect with Waska for one-on-one -on -one mentoring with the first session completely free. What have you got to lose? Check out IlluminatedWarrior.com or send an email to waska at illuminatedwarrior.com. You're invited to step up your game and join us. You'll be glad you did. So I want to ask you about this program that you're offering um, mm -hmm. and speak a little mm -hmm. bit you know, astrologically about what the vernal equinox means and how it applies to um, what's going on in the world and how people could benefit from it and then speak about the Radiant program, please. Yeah, thank you. So... Okay, we are in a time of such transition and really like, you know, it's a, like a let there be light kind of moment. There's so much shifting and, and shaking. The metaphor I've used, um, one of the metaphors is like, we've been, you know, we've been acting out this like stage play, right? We've been in this performance and we've all been doing the thing. And then now the stage is going to be cleared and a whole new, you know, play is coming onto the scene, a whole new performance, a whole new show. Um, and so we're in that process of like, okay, we're really in the middle of that. Like, okay, we're clearing, 
the decks literally and something new will emerge that we have yet to really understand. The other metaphor is like a whole book is closing and we're just now going to crack open the new, you know, and that has to do with a lot of planets transitioning, important planets transitioning signs and just some really cool, spectacular cosmic things happening at the same time. March is like a powerhouse month. Um, and so Radiate is a truly like divinely downloaded um, program that it was like, you have to do this. And because as you heard, <laughs> my life is like, you know, there's a lot. We're also in the process of now we're going to be literally in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be moving into a, a new home right now we're with my in-laws. So we've been in transition for a very long time. So there's a lot moving in lots of different layers. And, and every time I checked in and was like, really like in this moment, and it was like, absolutely because of the cosmic energy. And so it's the type of experience where even if I use the same framework for it later on this year or next year, it would never be the same program. It's like the kind of thing. And I believe anybody who's doing anything out there, creating anything out there during this time, it will never be the same again. You will never be able to, not in a negative way, you can't replicate it. It's more in like a really positive, juicy way of like, this is so unique. And I believe that any of us that really stretch ourselves into creating something, starting with um, the equinox now, March 31st, um, March 21st, um, which also happens to be a new moon in Aries, which is a big starting point. This is like the beginning of the beginning of the beginning. It's like the first strike of a match and all of a sudden. Pff, so any energy that you put into starting something new for yourself, something that really reflects yourself because Aries has to do with yourself, like how you radiate out into the world. And so there's so much symbolism to it. Um, it's, eight weeks. And it's basically a collection of so many of the things that I've learned over the past few years, the metaphysical tools and the ways to really work our mindset and our magic and um, alchemize where we are into where we're going. And I've known from the beginning, even though I have a, a roadmap and a vision, and I have a, you know, an intention for what will happen. Part of that intention is absolute openness to the unknown and the uncertainty, which is part of what I keep feeling into and knowing deeper that it's part of my purpose in this lifetime is to help others recalibrate their relationship with the unknown, as in lessen your fear of the unknown and finding the power in that space. Um you know, when you don't know anything, then everything is possible. And we've been shown as a collective, as a human family, what that means to go into spaces of the unknown in the past couple of years. And now it's like the universe is basically like about to hand us a whole new empty script. <laughs> and the script is written as you go. It's almost like there's no, you know, there's no, oh, this is it. Read your lines. It's like, the li like you're drawing in the lines and if you I'm have the proud. courage to speak it out yes and in and you're improving it's like we're co-creating it's just all so um and the more conversations i have with incredible people that are it's like it's like we're we're all somehow feeling you know a lot of us are feeling stuff that we can't quite put into words and then that's okay that's part of the magic of like, oh, you know, I'd love to, but I'm not ready. It's just, it's seeing at it, it's shifting your perspective completely. Um, and really seeing, you know, the, the gifts in those shifts. Um, so it's, a, it's all about following the cosmic energies that we're in right now, and will continue to blossom over the next couple of months. It's about opening ourselves up to the blossoming that is um available in this equinox the new beginnings the um really focusing on the self uh because there's been a big period of energetic transformation we've gone through that then will 
over the next few months will continue to like flip into, we will be asked to really show, um, bring, come out in service from a very like, okay, what is the, like, what do I want to bring out into the world? What am I ready to express? And what am I ready to share? It's going to be awesome. I'm so proud of it. I'm so proud of it. And I'm really proud of saying yes to it myself Yeah. with all the like, oh, but what? And just continue, just continuing yeah. on. It's like, that's also part of the, the teachings that I think were meant to like uh, somehow integrate at this point is that surrendering to your purpose, you yeah. know? And we were talking about it before you hit record how, I was saying, oh, I'm so, I love that fact that you've kept this going. And you were like, yeah, you know, we do. And then we kind of like disengage and you come back in. I can so understand that. But there's always a thread that keeps you like back on. And sometimes you're like, but why do I have to, do you need to say that? And it's like, you're just kind of like, <laughs> you know, it just has to come out. And so we follow that because if not, then we feel the repressed energy Absolutely. Uh, you know, anybody out there that's feeling angry and can't really uh, like understand why ask yourself, what am I not expressing right now? And that could come in the ways of like, for us, it has to do with sort of like this uh, public sort of like expression of we talk, we yeah. share, we write, we send emails, but for other people it could be through creation or having conversations yeah. with certain people in their lives, any act that, it just has to come from you out and we will be swimming in this sea of other beliefs and um, disbeliefs and continuing to move through that, even though you feel like the odd person out, probably most of the time is like, that's where then, okay, well, you keep, I call it walking in magic and it's yeah. like messy and magnificent and sometimes feels like, why am I even doing this? But you take, you can take, you know, be flexible also with yourself yeah, and then get back in. It's, uh, you know, and being, and, and, and seeding uh, optimism and seeding joy and seeding hope. Um, the world needs it. Like the, the, the most basic foundational sense of love, the love of just like, that holding um is what everybody's craving simplicity we've we've been we've been asked to shift from complexity to simplicity in big ways so giving ourselves permission to seek that simplicity and see the value in it yeah absolutely like you know that's been a lot of the work that uh Taurus has been doing with us and Uranus and Taurus Uranus is a big like freedom seeker awakener planet and he's been in Taurus showing us how to like uh, strip away anything that we don't find of val of true intrinsic value. And for many people, it's looked like big changes and transitions over the past couple of years, relationships, jobs, where you live, what you do, what you have, some outside, very obvious things. Some Sometimes it's just a lot of really internal stuff that you're like, I don't even know how well, now I think that many of us that are called to like, you know, like the cliche word light worker path, but whatever, you know, however anybody sees that, it's just like, oh, you want to do something really good and beautiful in the world, but maybe you haven't figured out what it is. I think we're going to have some more information around that will come through us now yeah. if we like are conscious and aware and work with the energies around mm. us. It's yeah. just a really great opportunity for that. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. <clears throat> and I, I hear it so many times when, when uh, because I host retreats. Some, I'm living down in Nashville now. And it's a great place to do that. Oh my god, I um, love yeah. that. Come on down, y'all. Yes. I, I never pull up that ah. y'all, but come on down, y'all. Um, oh, but so beautiful. many times the guys like, I don't know. Just like you said before, I don't know if this is the right time. Well, if if if, if it's not the right time now, I don't know when the right time is going to be oh, because completely. everybody is going through some kind of shift, some kind of like discomfort, some kind of disease, and 
now is the time, you know. So you you were speaking about um, you know, just where different people are and 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 mindsets and all. And it's like it's that that what we call a liminal time. And the liminal time is like it's between here and there. It's it's like yes. people love all the all the hero's journey. You know the uh, the stories of uh, you know the rise and the fall and the rise again, and and that's what this is. You know that's what the mm-hmm. radiance is. That's what that's what's being offered. So yeah. um, we're I living say, it. We're we living, living it. Like, it. So yes. full, yes. going full circle. It is a choice, though. You know, do you want to live it or you want to, you know, sleep through it? You know, choice is yours. I support either or, but um, I'm going to live it. Yeah. Yes. So how can people um, connect with you? Yes. Maria well, Aleandra. you'll have my website, MariaAleandra.com. Yes. And from there, you can um, get on my newsletter, or email me, seek me out. And um, yeah, and I'll also send you the direct link for the for the Radiate program. So you have it there in case anybody's interested in that. Um, it's going to be really, really, really profoundly beautiful. And we'll also have a component of working together as a group. And it's a very intimate group and also working directly with me. So I'll do astrology sessions and it's like coaching that's informed by also the astrology that I see and just channeling. That's also been something that I've, you know, had to <laughs> lean more because it's like the 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 sort of requirements of spirit to be like girl are you ready like lean more into oh yes i am the channel oh yes I, and we're all in some capacity um but it's like there's so much information that's coming through in different ways and will impact people and whatever wherever they're ready to hear it and so it also includes a lot of just that channeling of what's happening for a person specifically and being able to see beyond the I'm going to call it the confines of mm-hmm. where you might be right now that you can't see beyond um I'm really good at that and I it's it's a passion and it's like it's something that just comes so like naturally and easily that I see somebody and I work with them and it's like in a short amount of time we can shift so much and I'm like how does that even happen and it's just a uh, <laughs> It's just like, it's just beautiful. And so I, I I yearn to be able to do that for more and more people and, um, you know, support my life through that and support other people through that and keep growing and rising and sparking and, you know, making the world a more magical place. So yeah. And you are doing that, my friend. You are doing that. Yeah, I appreciate that. So Thank this you. has been a really heartwarming conversation for me. <sighs> and uh, I hope the listeners, you guys got some good jewels of wisdom out of it. And you'll connect with uh, Maria Alejandra and check out the Radiate program. Um, yeah. And um, again, the, the, our information will be in the show notes. I'm going to do a shameless self, self-plug. self I'm listening to you. Um, I, we're not really putting it out there yet, but this uh, spring, late late spring, we're going to put um, a yin, another yin-yang retreat out there. We we did a small one nice. testing the waters. And uh, so that's good. And it's going to be for men and women. So um, we'll be hearing more about that as well. Um, so any jewels of wisdom you want to leave? Mm, yeah, I love that. You know, um, allow, uh, uh, just allow yourself to see your own, uh, radiance, give yourself permission. It's like, you know, we are all seeding something new and it really is in your, uh, I want to say like your service of just the energy of creation. Um, if you want to say something, if you want to share something, if there's something in your heart that feels like it just has to come out, let it. Because <laughs> yeah, it's um, yeah, it's your your medicine really matters, and uh, we're all we're all thirsty for it. So oh, thank yeah. you, Waska, for this. This really felt like a nice, very like talk about liminal. It was like yeah. you know, just playing in a whole different field. Um, it was beautiful. Part of what I love about co-creation because you don't know what ripples off. Yeah. It's just you play in it, you play in that field. And when it's genuine and it's like, oh wow, that's just magic your happens, love. So magic yeah. happens. Yeah. Yes. So thank you so much for this invitation. I had a my pleasure. My absolute pleasure. Absolute blast. Yeah, yeah, it was wonderful. Well, again, you know, <laughs> keep, keep tuning in. And um, you know, as I like to end the show, continue to walk your path with love and kindness. Mm. 
Visit IlluminatedWarrior.com if you'd like to go deeper and find out more about what's available within the Illuminated Warrior Men's Transformational Community. Tune in next time for more candid conversations for men and women about men on the way of the Illuminated Warrior Talk Show. Until next time, illuminate your path with loving kindness.